What up, everybody? This is your boy, Dedrick Cologne from House of Wrestling. This is my review for the April 21st episode of Impact Wrestling. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Follow House of Wrestling on all social media platforms. Follow me, Dedrick180, on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. Man, this was a very fun, entertaining, as the episode went along. It was very exciting. And I'm really looking forward to this Saturday's Rebellion pay-per-view. This was one of their better go-home shows for their special event slash pay-per-views. Um, man, it, it was a lot of uh, questions that I had going through my mind uh, in regards to how Impact Wrestling is going to play in the New Japan AEW Super Show, uh, especially with the Bullet Club and Honor No More, how that's going to tie in to the uh, AEW New Japan Pro Wrestling Super Show. But man, this was a really good go-home show. Um, I, I I like it. I like it. I like where they're going. And I will say this. Um, where Impact Wrestling was a year ago and where they are now in 2022 is a lot better and a lot productive and a lot more progressive um, you can see that there is a momentum that they're building. Um, hopefully they continue to build on it. And let's face it, like they're starting to become a very complementary alternative to WWE, AEW, and New Japan. Um, it's fun. It's fun. It's entertaining. Um, I know a few people have responded to, uh, whether it's Twitter, YouTube, as far as, you know, Impact Wrestling. And again, I'll state it again. This is not the same Impact Wrestling that we were somewhat accustomed to watching three, four, five years ago, even as far as 10 years ago, where it was just like, ah, this Impact Wrestling, it's not, nah, yeah, it's like, no, this is, this is really good. They have some interesting stories going on and they have a roster of, talented people that are doing some creative stuff and it's fun to watch uh the show started off with violent by design with eric young cody daner um facing decay with black taras and crazy steve this was a really i don't want to say a squash match but man violent by design was very dominant in this match of course they are the impact wrestling tag team champions um they look really good um I mean, they, of course, they dominated. Uh, Eric Young capped off the match with a DDT, one, two, three. I, when that move happened, um, I mean, there was a lot of stuff going on. There was a, you know, Crazy Steve with his cannonball, blocked Ross, you know, getting his offense in. But uh, that DDT from the counter, um, I was like, oh, damn. Like, that's it? Like, damn. Because usually Violent by Design matches are really, um, back and forth battle but this was just straight up to the point it's like all right violent by design is it uh but then from there we get a video recap of the josh alexander moose uh, situation that's been going on since uh february somewhat actually bound for glory yeah um and just that whole story video package was really good um uh, if you watch um if you watch all of Impact Wrestling's video packages, you will understand where the story started, where it escalated, and where it's going to go. Love that. Um, but then from there, we get uh, a promo for Under Siege, which is going to be, I believe, in May. Yeah, it's going to be in May. Uh, that should be interesting how that plays out. Uh, then we get a backstage segment, um, or actually a during the break segment, recapping what happened. And you had Rosemary and um, Havoc getting attacked by Tasha Steeles and Savannah Evans. That was really interesting. Um, I don't know if it's... I like Decay, but it feels like... They need a change of scenery. Um, I don't know if it's a change of scenery as a whole or as individuals, uh, but it does feel like they need a change of like scenery. Because I mean, let's face it, Decay 
has been there since, damn, the ultimate deletion with Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy. Um, And that was in 2016. That was six years ago. So, I don't know. Maybe it's time to freshen things up and, you know, they get a change of scenery or what have you and, you know, freshen it up. Um, But interesting uh, video they showed here with Tasha Steeles and... Uh, Savannah Evans, Tasha Steeles and Savannah Evans, they're on a run right now. Um, they've added a very aggressive um, attitude in the uh, knockouts division on Impact Wrestling. Um, something that is very unique and the way they're executing is very fun and relatable. And of course, we've just, you know, we've watched Tasha Steeles just you know, grow, uh, dating back to her tag team, Fire and Flavor with Kira Hogan. And just now she's the Knockouts champion. And with Savannah Evans, it's really cool to see. So that was a really interesting uh, video package. Then we get Brian Myers, Chelsea Green, and Matt Cardona. They come out. They pretty much uh, talk about how they just beat the hell out of Matt Cardona. Not Matt Cardona. Uh, w, uh, w. Morrissey. They run them down. They run down the ECW arena. And I did not expect this. This was really cool. You get Tony Mamaluke, Little Guido. Yes, Tony Mamaluke, Little Guido from ECW's FBI, Full-Blooded Italians. Yes, these guys came out. They talked. Man, this was fun. They just came at... um, Matt Cardona, Chelsea Green, and Brian Myers talking about you don't run down this arena. This is uh, these fans are awesome, and you get a big ECW chant in the arena. They cut to commercial, come back, and we have a match between Matt Cardona and not Little Guido. Is it Little Guido? Yes, Little Guido Nunzio. I forgot what the name they called him and everything. Um, this was a decent match, man. He looked he looked good, uh, little Guido. Um, I enjoyed it. He was man; those guys were fun in ECW, um, especially with the big dude that they had. That man, they were just a fun, fun group of guys in ECW. This was a pretty cool match, um, but in the end, there was a distraction. Matt uh, Cardona performed his uh, finishing move, Code of Silence, on Little Guido. One, two, three. They win. Then there's a post-match beatdown on Tony Mamaluke and Luguido. Out comes W. Morrissey for the save. Um, then he's low-blowed by uh, Chelsea Green. So he's on the floor, and Brian Myers and uh, Matt Cardona, they're like, all right, let's get him. They bring in a table. They set it up in the corner. So they're about to put him through the table. Then out comes Jordan Grace. She makes the save. Um, She starts beating up all of them. And then we get uh, W.E. Morrissey. He has Matt Cardona. And Jordan Grace is just signaling, like, put him through the table, put him through the table, put him through the table. And puts him through the table. That was a cool spot. So good to see Jordan Grace back. Um, I know she's been off for a while. I think her last match was, like, the Matt Cardona match for the Digital Media Championship? I think so. I don't know. Comment below. Let me know. Let me know if that was if that's true or not. If she was if that was her last appearance. Um, so then we get a backstage segment with Eddie Edwards and the I don't know more. And they basically call the Bullet Club and eh, not so much Jonathan Gresham, but more so the Bullet Club as rats. Uh, they talk about how these guys back in Ring of Honor kept to themselves. Uh, they thought they were above everybody. Real interesting promo. Again, this is one of those. Um, this goes back to what I said earlier in this video. You know, one of those questions like, man, how does this play with the AEW New Japan Super Show? Um, you know, Honor No More is basically for a while they've been running down Ring of Honor, but we all know that Ring of Honor, uh, Tony Khan has purchased it, and eventually they're going to have uh, airtime. So you have that. Um, Then you have Bullet Club, Jay White was just, yesterday was on Dynamite, talking about the Undisputed Elite and the Bullet Club, now you have this on Impact, then you have him in New Japan, 
how does this all tie in? I'm really interested in this. Uh, it was a really good segment with uh, Eddie Edwards and Honor No More. Then we get a video package of Jonah discussing his fight with Tamahiro Ishii on Rebellion. I'm looking forward to that. Um, if you guys seen my review of New Japan Pro Wrestling, um, Windy City Riot, Jonah in that street fight was awesome. Uh, Tamahiro Ishii and Minoru Suzuki. You have to watch those guys live. So I'm looking forward to Jonah and Tamahiro Ishii. That's my match that I am looking forward to. Um, man, the, just heavy hitters. Just, he, just let me see this match, how this plays out. Um, I did like the match that Jonah had. Oh my God, who was it with? I think it was Josh Alexander. Did he have... Oh my god, I can't remember what match it was. It was not too long ago. Forgive me, guys. I watched so much wrestling. Forgive me. Um, but he had a really solid match. This match is going to probably low-key be one of the best matches of the night on Rebellion this Saturday. Um, but yeah, he's basically saying this is going to be a dogfight. Then we get a match between Shira and Gabriel Rodriguez. This is how long this match lasted. He shoulder blocks Gabriel Rodriguez. Then he does like a choke slam driver. One, two, three. That was the end of the match. That's it. Um, then we get a backstage with uh, Gun Gunger. Um, and he's basically talking about how he's glad he's not with uh, Shira and his manager. And, you know, he just wants to do it on his own. Me personally, I would put Shira and Gunjar uh, as a tag team. Um, that would be pretty cool because they're two big dudes. Um, Impact's really not doing anything with Shira and Gunjar, but if you put them together as a tag team, now you have something special added to that tag team division, um, which actually you needed. And they their work is really good. They're really uh, good workers. I mean, I would put them as a tag team. Um, that's just me. Um, Shira, he first time I've seen him on Impact, I was like, damn, this dude's big. And he's had some pretty good matches. Uh, Gunjar, he's had some solid matches. Like, I would put them as a tag team, and you got something special there with those guys. Um, one, because uh, they're not like everybody else. Their presentation isn't everyone else. And, you know, just because... Um, you know, their look, their feel. Uh, granted, they're, um, I believe they're Pakistani or Indian or what have you. That even adds more to it because, let's face it, how many, how much representation of uh, Indians in Impact Wrestling is there? And in professional wrestling, there's not a lot. So, I would like to see that because, um, for me personally, I like seeing more of a diverse um, roster. That's competing for things, so to speak. And that would be a nice element because let's you look at Impact Wrestling's tag team division. It's not very diverse. <laughs> let's just face it. It's not that diverse. And putting those two guys together, that would bring um, some diversity to it. That's much needed. Um, and they're fresh. They're young. They're talented. Like, run, like you, you got something there with those guys if you put them together. Uh, then from there, we have, bear with me, I'm looking at my notes. Uh, we have a backstage segment with Moose and Scott Demore. Moose is basically saying he wants protection uh, from Joss Alexander. He doesn't want him to attack him or anything like this. And Scott Demore's is like, really? You, wanna, you want protection? You want security to protect you from Josh Alexander? Did you think about that when you went into his house? Did you think about that? And he starts running down a list. And Scott DeMore basically says that, hey, I'm going to be out there um, monitoring this. So I don't care what you think. Uh, then we get the match between I Don't Know More, Vincent, Matt Taven, uh, Mike Bennett, and Kenny King versus the... Bullet Club, Gallows, Anderson, Chris Bay, and Jay White. For me, this was the 
match of the night. This was a really cool match. Um, you had Vincent and Carl Anderson start off the match. Then you had Jay White and Matt Taven. That's a matchup I want to see. Uh, you had that face up. Then you had Chris Bay and Kenny King. And I did not know this. Um, I knew that Kenny King trained Chris Bay, but I did not know that they have never had a singles match. Impact Wrestling, you got to do it. You have to do it. Um, from there, I don't know more. They had the advantage over the Bullet Club during commercial. Uh, Carl Anderson did a spine buster on Mike Bennett. Vincent and Jay White, they did their thing. Uh, Gallows, Hot Tag, Clean House. Uh, then you had the... Was it the... You had the Tiger Driver um, that Kenny King did on Jay White. Then you had Chris Bay do the finesse on Kenny King. Then you had Carl Anderson do the stun gun on Mike Bennett. And then you had the Magic Killer, Carl Anderson, and Gallows perform that on Mike Bennett. One, two, three. That was it. End of story. Bullet Club wins. Um, I'm looking forward to Rebellion. Um, one thing that crossed my mind with Bullet Club when they came out and watching them and everything, I'm like, who's the next member of Bullet Club? Very interesting. Oh, think about it. They've, there hasn't been like, they kicked GLD out and everything, but like, who's the next member? And I'm going to do a video on the Bullet Club and just how, what I think might transpire in the next month or two um, with Jay White and everything. But that's that's what keeps crossing my mind. Uh, we get a backstage segment with uh, Steve Macklin. He basically says Jay White uh, never, does it, never does anything alone. Um, can't be trusted. Uh, basically... Tells him, you know, tag him, bag him, and mayhem. So he's basically running down Jay White. Like, there's a lot of people in all these wrestling companies that are gunning for Jay White. And that's very interesting considering he's the Bullet Club leader. Um, I think he's the first Bullet Club leader to have this type of, um, I don't want to say attention, but... Um, have all these people gun and form in different promotions. Um, so that's interesting to think about. Pay attention. Uh, then we get a backstage segment with the inspiration and they're talking about their match with, uh, um, the, uh, Oh my God. I'm looking at it right now. The influence. There we go. Had a brain lock. Forgive me guys. Uh, then we get a backstage segment with Taya Valkyrie. Uh, she's taught, Basically talking about how she's going to get back uh, what's hers, which is the Lucha uh, Libre AAA Women's uh, Championship, the Reign of the Reigns Championship from Dorana Peraza. Um, and at Rebellion, she's going to become a four-time champ. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, it's good to see her back in Impact Wrestling. Um, that's going to be a banger match uh, this Saturday. Then we get a match between Mike Bailey and Ace Austin with Laredo Kid and Trey Miguel. This was a fun match. I recommend you guys find somewhere to watch this match. This was a very good match. Um, really good. One thing that stuck out to me in this match was, and I tweeted this, Mike Bailey and Ace Austin need to be a tag team. Um, they have such chemistry fluidity when they perform tag team moves it was just and like there was a synergy between these guys um i hope they do it of course there is the triple threat uh ultimate x match at rebellion between mike bailey ace austin and uh trey miguel and of course we've seen that after the match where um of course ace austin and mike bailey they won but after the match there was a beat down by uh, Ace Austin on Trey Miguel. He's looking at Mike Bailey like, hey, you're going to help me. And Mike Bailey kicked the shit out of um, <laughs> Ace Austin. Like that kick, like, pow. It was like, ooh, man. 
Um, so I'm looking forward to that match. But man, I in the coming months, like I would like to see uh, Ace Austin and Mike uh, Bailey become a tag team because man, they there's just a synergy there that um, again, a AEW uh, Impact Wrestling they do need to freshen up their tag team division and. Uh, like I said, with Shira and Gunjar and Mike Awesome or Mike Awesome, uh, Mike Bailey and Ace Austin, like if you had those four guys become tag teams, like that could actually freshen up your tag team division. And of course, we know the Good Brothers contracts are coming up soon, so we don't know if they're going to stay in Impact or go to the AEW Ring of Honor side. Which I'm more inclined to believe that's what's going to happen. Um, once Ring of Honor gets a TV deal, so I think that's what's gonna happen. Um, but man, that that would be fun. But yeah, this was a good match. I recommend you guys see it. Uh, then we get a backstage segment with Arno No More. Uh, you know they're giving their whole thing as far as uh, how they want to. They're gonna beat Bullet Club at uh, Rebellion. Everyone starts talking. Then Vincent just somehow just I got some business to attend to. So he's just walking through, um, I don't know if it was a, like a factory, uh, like it's crazy how, where they're at, because it looks like a, a junkyard and a warehouse all in one, and there's tools around, and basically he went to this car, uh, went in the trunk, grabbed some jumper cables, closed the trunk, went walk to this other warehouse uh he looks at this table he you know just like hey are you up hey are you up you're gonna get up you're gonna get up pulls the sheet back it's pco so basically he had to jump start <laughs> pco with some jumper cables it is what it is so for me it was kind of corny but it was funny because it's pco he's done this before he had an entrance where he was like frankenstein in madison square garden Back at the was the War of Worlds uh, pay per view between New Japan and Ring of Honor, like that. So I don't know. That was funny. Uh, then in the end, we have we have the Moose public apology to Josh Alexander. Um, he has his attorney read it out, and he's like, "Show some uncharacteristic respect." I'm like, huh? Uh, Moose calls Josh Alexander a loser, uh, exposing him as not a protector and not a role model. Uh, then we got um, Moose saying, you know, I'm not sorry for whooping your ass at Bound for Glory. I should have done more. Josh Alexander comes out, beats up security. Scott Demore looks at him and just lets him in the ring. They start Fisticuffs, Josh Alexander and Moose. Uh, Moose performs at least two rock bottoms on uh, Josh Alexander. They get to the apron. Um, Josh Alexander retaliates, hits him, hits him, hits him. There's a table on the side of the apron. And Josh Alexander performs a spike pile driver through the table. Moose is laying there. Josh Alexander gets the title, looks at it. That's how it ends. So that is the episode of um, the April 20th episode of Impact Wrestling, the go home show for heading into Rebellion. Man, it was a fun show. Um, again, the thing that sticks out for me in this show, um, for me, I know more or less like Moose probably going to retain and Josh Alexander, but for me, it's the Bullet Club. I don't know more. Um, how is this going to play out? Um, are we are we going to get some interaction or some help from or assistance from I don't know more from another member? Um, are we going to see a new member of Bullet Club? Could it be someone from I don't know more turns and joins Bullet Club? I don't know. Um, but I am interested with that match. Um, but yeah, this Saturday, um, just to give you a rundown of what the matches are for Rebellion, we're going to have the Influence versus the Inspiration for the Knockouts World 
Tag Team Championship. We're going to have the X Division Triple Threat Match. Ace Austin, Trey Miguel, and Mike Bailey. We're going to have Violet by Design defend the Impact World Tag Team titles in an eight-team elimination challenge. That should be fun. Uh, then we're going to have Jonah versus Ishii. Uh, we're going to have Tasha Steele versus Rosemary for the Knockouts World Championship. Uh, we're going to have Eddie Edwards versus Jonathan Gresham. That should be a good one. Hopefully, Jonathan Gresham is okay because I know that it was reported that he uh, had to miss an event for COVID, or not COVID, uh, concussion protocol. Uh, then we're going to have Jay White versus Steve Macklin versus Chris Saban. See how that plays out. We're going to have the AAA Reina de Reigns Championship, Deanna Peraza versus Ty Valkyrie. And then in the main event, we're going to have Moose versus Giles Alexander for the Impact World Championship. So my takeaway from this event, again, goes back to the Bullet Club and Honor No More. How is that going to play out, uh, especially with the Josh Alexander, not Josh Alexander, Jay White, Steve Macklin, Chris Saban match, especially what happened tonight with Honor No More. You know, what's going to happen? Are we going to get, are we going to see someone uh, new assisting Honor No More? Are we going to get someone turning? And joining the Bullet Club, you know, what are we going to get uh, from Rebellion? Um, so, I mean, there's good questions. You you always want to have these questions when you go into a pay-per-view. Um, but that that's, it's interesting. It, it is interesting. This Bullet Club, I don't know more. Um, this was one of the smartest things that Impact Wrestling has done uh, in a while. To have these two interesting factions feud with each other because there are so many components outside of impact that are kind of tied to it so you don't know like man where's this gonna go um but I, we gotta wait till saturday and see um but yeah that that's my thing like is there gonna be a new member to bullet club being added um well, what's gonna happen because let's face it chris bay um I don't think he's in a... Yeah, uh, from that rundown, he's not in a match. Uh, the Good Brothers might be in the eight tag team elimination match with the uh, Violin by Design. So, what's going to happen with Bullet Club? That's my main thing. What's going to happen with Bullet Club and how this transpires and what's going to happen with the Jonathan Gresham Eddie Edwards match? Um, are we going to get someone from Ring of Honor... Or, here's the thing, are we going to get Sanjay Dutt and um, Jay Lethal with Sanam Singh costing Jonathan Gresham the match? Which I don't think that might happen, but they might make an appearance. So, there's so many questions going into Rebellion, like what's going to happen? Um, you know, like I said, Bullet Club, I don't know more. Um, is Jay Lethal, Sanjay Dutt, Sanam Singh going to appear um is ty valkyrie going to win that reign of the reigns championship from diana peraza which i think might happen um so many things that's going to happen that could happen at rebellion but i'm looking forward to rebellion this saturday and what's going to happen um but hey impact wrestling's been on a roll um, i recommend you guys watching it it's fun it's entertaining um and it's a complimentary alternative to AEW and WWE. So if you haven't watched it, I recommend you watch it and enjoy it, man. It's fun. Uh, but yeah, this is my review for the April 21st episode of Impact Wrestling. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Follow House of Wrestling on all social media platforms. Follow me, Dedrin180, on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, give this video a thumbs up. Ah, <sighs> man. Like I always end my videos. Stop fighting over wrestling, man. Enjoy it. There's so much wrestling going on. There's so much excitement. Uh, we got Cody Rhodes and what's happening with him in WWE. We have the New Japan AEW Super Show. We have Impact Wrestling Rebellion. Uh, I know there's a few GCW events going on. So, look, there's a lot going on, man. Enjoy wrestling. It's fun. Um, it's an escape with everything going on in the world, man. We need this uh, escape, man. Enjoy. All right. So, with that. I'm out.